In my last video, I told you why I love the Garmin Instinct Solar. Now I'm going to show you how I customize the watch for hiking. I'm Mike, and this is Outside Chronicles. I love everything outside. And if you do too, you're going to want to click that subscribe button. And if you find value in this video, be sure to click that like button. The manual for the Garmin Instinct, well, it's okay. It's a little hard to follow, but it's got all of the information in there. But it, this watch does so much that it's really hard to figure out what to set and when. So I'm going to just go through the settings that I've changed and the custom activities I've created specific to hiking. The first thing I change is the position format. By default, it's set to the Military Grid Reference System, or MGRS. I switch it to UTM or Universal Transverse Mercator. Most maps I use in the backcountry have a UTM grid line on it, and it comes in handy to locate your position on the map. So to change the location field format to UTM, you're going to hold the menu button, which is this middle button on the left-hand side, and it brings up another menu. Then you use the bottom left and middle button to scroll the various menus. So we're going to go to settings and then we're going to scroll all the way down to system. And then we're going to scroll down again to format and scroll yet again to position format. And here you can see that it's set to MGRS. So we're going to just switch that to UTM. So we got go to UTM UPS. So we're going to select that. And now we've set that in our settings menu. What we're going to do is hit the back button, which is this bottom right button also says set on it. So that's going to just get us back to where we started from on the watch face. So the next thing I customize is the watch face. I don't do anything real special with that, uh, but I do change one of the fields. So I'll show you how I do that. So you hit the middle button, the menu button and hold it down. And now we're going to use the GPS button, the top right, to go to watch face. And there's the watch face that I have selected. And there's a bunch of different layouts that you can actually choose from. But I kind of like the layout that I had. But I am going to change one of the fields. So now I'm going to hit the GPS button again and select customize by hitting GPS yet again. And now you can see the circle field up here is flashing. We can customize that if we want. So um, I'm going to leave it as January 14th. And once you're happy with the selection, you just hit the GPS button again and it goes to the next field. And we're going to leave that field exactly where it is by hitting the GPS button. And this bottom field is the one that I'm going to change. So I'm going to select uh, the sunrise and sunset. So you just kind of go through these until you see the widget that you want to put there. And then you hit the GPS button and you see it gave a checkbox right there. And now my watch face is set. So it automatically brings you right back to the watch face. So now that we've customized our watch face and added the sunrise sunset widget, it's a good information to have out on a hike. We're going to go and actually start an activity. So we do that by hitting the GPS button. And you notice these are highlighted. These are what are called favorites. You can just scroll past those using the down button. And I'm going to select hike by hitting the GPS button. Now we're in the activity, but the activity hasn't started yet. And you can notice this flashing menu up there and it has an arrow. So to access it, we just hit the up arrow and we can customize certain things. We can add a course. We can change any of the hiking settings before we start. We can change our power mode. So if we wanted to change this hike to ultra track for some reason, we can do that now. And we can also set up navigation. If we have a course that we want to follow, we can uh, set up our courses to follow a certain course. I'll show you that later in the video. So now we can hit the back button and get to the activity menu. And to start the activity, we're just going to hit the GPS button again. And you notice we're in the activity. We can now scroll through the various data fields and data screens that the activity has by default. And if we want to access our altitude barometer and compass, we can do that within the activity very easily by hitting this bottom left button and holding it down. And that activates the altitude barometer and compass. And you can scroll through the various screens that are available within that widget. 
And then to get back to our activity, we're going to hit the bottom right button and hit the back button. So now we're in our activity. We can do a bunch of other things. If you want to use the backlight, which comes on whenever you hit any of the buttons, but if you just want to hit the backlight without changing a field or a screen, you hit this top left button or the control button, or you can see it says light on the inside of the bezel. You can also turn off the backlight by hitting it a second time. And while we're on this button, if you hold, press and hold it, it brings up a widgets menu where you have fast access to various widgets to change other settings within the watch very quickly and access other functionality. So we'll hit the back button to go back into the activity. Another thing you can do is hit the back button while you're in the activity and that's going to bring you back to your watches screens. So as you can see, these are the default watch screens available to you. And then to get back into your activity, you just hit the back button again and we're back into the activity. And finally, we're going to pause our activity. You do that by hitting the GPS button once and you can see it brings up this stop symbol and now we get a menu and we have an option to resume our activity after we've paused it. We can save the activity. We can also resume it later and you can get back to start. So this is a navigation feature. You can use their track back feature, which will follow the path that you took to the point that you are at right now or you can take a straight line back to your trailhead. If I hit the back button, I'm back to that menu. And for now, I'm going to just save this activity and it'll automatically sync with Garmin Connect. Once it's saved, it gives you a summary of your activity. If you hit the GPS button and hit next, it'll actually give you details about it right on your watch. All this data is in Garmin Connect, but if you wanted to see it right away on your watch, you can do that. We'll just hit the back button and get all the way back to our watch face. Now I'm going to show you how I customize an activity for longer hikes I do because there's different data screens that I really want to see. So there's two ways to actually add an activity. You can hold down the menu button, the middle button here, go to settings by selecting it with the GPS button and activities and apps. And you can see it's the same activities that I scrolled through before. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, or scroll from the top, you see there's an add. The other way that you can add an activity is by hitting the GPS button and you get that same menu right here. And I find it's easier just to go up and hit add. You can just scroll through all your activities all the way to the bottom as well. And then hit add, hit the GPS button. Now you have the option. You can copy an activity or you can just add one of their default activities. What I did is I actually added one of the defaults and then I customized that menu. If you copy an activity, you give it a brand new name and it just pulls all of the data fields and data screens over into that activity. So for what I'm gonna show you today, we're just gonna use the current mountaineering activity, which comes bundled with a bunch of different settings and data screens and also lets you set the icon and the name. You can always reset it to default if you make a mistake. So I'm gonna hit Mountaineer, and am I gonna set it as a favorite? Not right now, because I'm gonna show you how to reorder this. So now it actually asks you where you want to put Mountaineer. So I'm gonna actually put it right next to Hike. So you see right there's Hike, and I'm gonna hit the GPS button and select it. We've added Mountaineer to our activities menu, and you can see the different activities, and now Mountaineer is there right below Hike where we put it. So now we're gonna select it by hitting the GPS button. And you see we have our options menu if we wanna go into it. We also have a data screen. So if I scroll through the different data screens, you can see this is an elevation specific screen that has ascent, descent, and elevation. If I hit it again, notice it's a distance screen with just distance and vertical speed. And we go to the next one. This is now the location screen. And if you notice, this is in UTM format, not MGRS. If we wouldn't have set that setting at the beginning of the video, this would have been in MGRS, not UTM. And then we have our heart rate zones, a breadcrumb navigation, as well as the time of day. And now we're back to elevation. So those are all of the default screens for mountaineering. Let's actually go and customize those. Now we're gonna customize our data screens. We do that by holding the middle button, the menu button, 
And now we're going to select Mountaineering Settings by hitting the GPS button. And we're going to select Data Screens by hitting the GPS button again. And if you notice, this one has Total Ascent, Elevation, Total Descent, and our Heart Rate. I kind of like the way it looks, so I'm going to leave it the way it is and go on to the next screen. I do that by clicking the down arrow. And this is the data screen I actually want to change because I want to change the layout and the fields on it. So we're going to select it by hitting GPS. And then we're going to go to the fields. And I want to make it a five field window. So we're going to scroll through the different fields. You can see what they look like as you go through there. And now this is our five field. We have one with the circle where the heart is, two, three, four, and five. So we're going to select this one, and you can see it now changes to a five fields. So in the fields, I'm going to customize the data that I see. So now if you notice, as I scroll through the fields, it has this icon right here that shows you the different locations of each field. So we're going to go back to field one, and we're going to customize what's in there. So in field one, I do like heart rate, which we're going to leave right where it is. Field two, which is the upper left field, I'm going to change that to my average pace. So we're going to click that, and now we're going to go to the pace fields, and we're going to select average pace. For field three, I like to see the distance, which is the bottom left field. So we're going to go click into there, scroll down to our distance fields, and select distance. Now for field four, which is the right side field, I like to have the timer in there. So we're gonna select that field, go over to timer fields and put in a timer. And now for field five, which is across the bottom of the face, I like to put the actual time in there. So we're gonna select that. And that one's actually located under other fields. And let's go to time of day, select. So there's a lot of fields and there's a lot of data that the watch collects that you can display on these different data screens. And I will link to all of the definitions of the data fields in the description so you can see what's available. So now, we hit <clears throat> so now we hit the back button to see what our data field looks like. So this is the way the watch is going to work. The first thing we're going to see is the ascent and elevation and descent. Then we're going to see our custom screen and then the location and so on. And I'm not a big fan of that. I'd like to actually see the, my custom screen first. So we're going to go back into our custom screen by hitting the GPS button. And then we're going to go down to reorder. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this custom screen above the heart rate elevation screen as the first screen. And I'm going to hit the back button. And yes, I'm going to save changes. So now our first screen is now our custom screen. And the elevation screen is our second screen. And now you see location stays where it was as the third screen. Now let's check out a couple different settings, specifically alerts. So I'm going to hold down the menu button again, the middle button, and I'm going to go to menu settings by hitting the GPS button to hit next. And I'm going to scroll down once and go to alerts. And alerts are pretty cool. You can set them up for different things. I like to set up alerts for my distance, first of all. So I'm going to select distance as an alert hit next, and I'm going to set this up for every mile I'd like to be alerted. So I'm going to hit one, hit the next button, and now I can do the half mile. So I'm going to just scroll up until I get to zero. Okay, and I'm going to hit next. So now I have a distance alert. So every mile, I'm going to get a little vibration alert on my watch. So let's go back into alerts and I'm going to add a new, another new alert because I also like to be alerted on elevation. And the elevation alert is pretty cool because 
It lets you set a minimum and a maximum elevation as well as different changes in elevation. So I like to hike in the high peaks of the Adirondacks and those are 4,000 foot or more peaks. So I like to be alerted on the high alert. I'm gonna turn that one on and I'm gonna set that to 4,000 feet. So as I cross 4,000 feet, I'm gonna get a vibration alert. And we're gonna hit next. Low alert, I don't really care about, so I'm gonna actually leave that one off. And now the ascent alarm, I'm gonna also turn that one on. And I like to be alerted um, sometimes every 1,000 feet, sometimes every 500 feet. So I'm gonna set that to 500 right now. And hit next, the GPS button. And descent, I don't really care about. I'm gonna leave that off. So to summarize, we just set up two alerts. One is for distance for every mile. So every mile we'll get a vibration alert. And we also set up an elevation alert. We turned on the high elevation at 4,000 feet. So when we get above 4,000 feet, we should get an alarm. We also set up a alarm for every 500 feet we climb, we're gonna get a vibration alert. Now we're gonna just go back one screen and check out some of the other settings that are available to us. So we can check out the power mode. I usually leave this at normal and that gives you about 30 hours of life plus a little bit more for input if you got solar. You can also switch that to ultra track if you are kind of worried about that. Um, so now we're gonna go to the metronome. We don't need that. Auto lapse, you usually don't use that for hiking. Auto pause, you may use. This will actually pause your activity and resume your activity if you were to stop for a per long period of time. I personally don't use this because the Garmin Connect data will actually tell you your total moving time versus your resting time. So if I'm gonna be stopped on top of a mountain for lunch or something like that, I usually just manually pause my activity. Next is auto climb. This feature, if turned on, will flip to a custom data screen, like if you wanted to have your elevation screen when you're gaining elevation as the default screen on your watch, it'll automatically flip to that when it detects you climbing. 3D speed and 3D distance, I typically don't use this. It takes into account both distance and elevation when it's doing its calculations. And most maps that I use, use the ground distance, not distance plus elevation. So I like to, I like to use the same kind of uh, format as the map I use. And you can turn auto scroll. Um, that will just scroll through your data screens automatically. You won't have to hit these buttons to go up and down, which might be a neat feature. Um, and your background color, rename the activity. And then this is where you would actually restore it to defaults, just in case you wanted to reset the mountaineering activity back to factory. So now I'm back into the main activity screen and we're gonna show you how to actually set up navigation. So if you press and hold the menu button again, and go to navigation, hit the GPS button. So you can navigate back to start. You can also navigate courses. So I have a couple courses loaded here that I can select. These are courses that I've created using either Gaia GPS or the Garmin Explore app or Caltapo and imported them into the Garmin Connect app. And then it syncs up with the watch, which is pretty cool. I'll probably do another video to show you exactly how I get my tracks on the watch. But you can just, if you want to navigate to Allen Mountain, you can do the course, you can see the overview map, and here you can scroll in. Um, if you hit the GPS button, it moves it up and down. Hit the GPS button, you can move left and right. Hit the GPS button again, you can scroll in and scroll out. So it's somewhat useful. Uh, but really, um, it's kind of nice to see different data. You can tell the elevation plot of the actual course. And that's really handy uh, because that actually will be live during your activity. So you can kind of see where you are. So we're going to just go back to the main activity now and scroll to our default screen. Finally, I just wanted to show you what the activity looks like when it starts and the different things that you can do while you're in the activity. So I'm gonna hit the GPS button to actually start the activity. 
And you can see I have my custom data screens up first. I have my average pace, my distance, my timer, as well as the current time. And it would show my heart rate if I actually had it on my wrist. And then we're gonna scroll through. Here's our default elevation screen, our ascent, elevation, total descent, our location in UTM format, heart rate, our breadcrumb or navigation, and also the time of day, and then we're back to our original screen. So if I hold down the menu button, I can get into those Mountaineer settings and I can change this on the fly, which is, I think, really cool. If I wanna change my power mode, I can do that here. If I wanna turn on navigation, I can just say, okay, I'm gonna do a course, and yep, I wanna do Allen Mountain. Now it's gonna take a couple seconds to load the track, and then we'll be able to actually navigate the track and we'll get some extra data screens when it loads. So obviously you don't see the track because I'm nowhere near Allen Mountain right now, but as you can see, we have some additional data screens. So remember we had our elevation profile, so uh, we still got a little ways to go. And we have a new data screen. This is default from the navigation, which you can actually customize if you want to. And now we're back to our uh, normal mountaineering custom screen and our ascent and elevation. And remember, you can access those widgets by holding the control button up here to get to these widgets and activate various things. And the last thing I wanted to kind of show you is if you just hold down the GPS button, you can actually save a waypoint. So if you see something really cool and you want to make note of it on your track, just hold down the GPS button and it brings up this menu system. And if you hit next, it'll show you that it's saved and you can actually edit the name, give it a different kind of icon and give a little more information about it. So I'm just going to hit next and that is now a waypoint that is going to be saved when you sync your watch up with Garmin Connect, which is a really cool feature. And remember when you're done with the activity, just hit the GPS button. This will pause it and bring up a menu for various things that you can do. You can resume it, save it, resume it later, track back to start, uh, get your recovery heart rate or discard it. So I'm going to just discard this for now and it confirmed yes that I want to discard it and it gets rid of it and we're back to uh, just a watch and we'll go back to our watch face and that's it. The Garmin Instinct is a very powerful watch. It has tons of features and tons of settings. My suggestion is start with what I showed you in this video and customize it to suit your needs. You can always go back to default by clicking the reset to factory and it'll be just like you got it out of the box. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to click that like button. And if you want to see other outdoor adventures, gear reviews, how-tos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside. Thank you.